Welcome to the Expat Edge with Marcus and Matt, where we answer your questions about becoming an expat to help you thrive abroad. Hi everyone, welcome to the Expat Edge. In this video, we want to discuss the worst reasons to move to uh, an expat destination. Matt, uh, what is the one of the worst reasons someone could base this important decision on? Yeah, well, we've talked about this many times. I think for us, um, it really gets frustrating when people come to us asking about where they should move or what they should do. And then they just say, I want to go to these three countries because they're really cheap to live in. This is probably the worst reason. I can't think of a, a worse reason why you would choose a specific country. Um, you know, we'll do another video where we talk about great reasons to move to a specific country. But in terms of worst reasons, I mean, what does it have to do with anything? You, If you choose like that, there's a high likelihood you've never been to the country. You don't know anything about the culture. And I also have found that some of the cheapest countries in the world also have very difficult languages to learn. There are a few exceptions, right? Colombia comes to mind. They speak Spanish and it's relatively cheap country. Also very highly rated, um, Mexico as well. But in general, if it's a cheap country, you're not gonna know anything about it. That doesn't mean it's necessarily a bad choice, but you need to do way more research other than just basing your decision on cost of living. Because, you know, I, I've said this a few times now and I would continue to repeat it. If you wanna live somewhere on $1,500 a month, you can live somewhere anywhere in the United States or Western Europe. So cost of living should not be a consideration. Of course, I'm not telling you, you know, pick Switzerland right away and you need to find a job that makes $10,000 a month or else you can't even afford an apartment. But, um, you know, cost of living should be very far down the list um, in terms of reasons to move to a specific country. And what do you think about cost of living? You, you also get... Yeah, I want to share my experience. I think um, that's absolutely correct because you will miss things that aren't calculated into that co cost of living like um, you'll get general, you know, lists of the cheapest places or whatever, but you're, you're missing maybe the costs of cost of like the quality of, for I'm example, just gonna say. uh, you'll see a list that says, you know, the average monthly spend on groceries for, I don't know, uh, four person family, but nowhere does it says does it state the quality of those of that food or the products that you're consuming so um you know i would be weary of some of those things um putting that at the top of the list because there's a lot of factors that you need to to study there and not ne not necessarily will you be able to study it um from abroad right you you actually have to go and experience that place and so yeah, I, I just don't think that cost of living, based on my own experience between the U.S., Russia, and Germany, for example, um, you know, healthcare is is overwhelmingly expensive in the U.S., uh, very cheap in Russia. I I feel that in Germany, you know, yeah, the taxes are are you pay more in tax in income tax, but the you offset that by the low cost of of healthcare in germany so i have a family and that's that's one of the the factors for right. me where i say it's so good here for my kids for example or right. for for my family that you know i wouldn't necessarily um move pick up my family just because something might be a little bit cheaper right right no i i agree 100 percent. i mean i actually just saw a great video the other day um, I watched this, um, he's actually a Russian YouTuber who lives in LA, he's been there for many years. He did a video called, Why Groceries Aren't ex As Expensive As You Think in the US. And it was actually really interesting, and for his, the way he did this mm -hmm. was, he went to Whole Foods in Los Angeles, and he had one of his good friends in Moscow go to the grocery store, and they bought the same stuff. And then he showed the price, and it was like, one and a half or two times more ex expensive at Whole Foods in the US. Actually, there are a number of foods that are uh -huh. much cheaper in the U.S. than they are in Russia, even at Whole Foods, um, which obviously people don't ever think might be the case. Anyway, he said, look, it costs you one and a half or maybe it was two times more expensive in the U.S., but the average salary in the U.S. is 10 times higher. And the minimum salary right. in the U.S., even minimum wage, you know, is only is you know five or six times higher than the average salary in um, Russia. So he's like, even if you take this into account, buying the more expensive groceries in that country, you know, you still are, are making out, even though you're paying more 
on a like dollar basis in one country doesn't actually mean you're paying more. So uh, it's kind of a long-winded way of saying, okay, yes, you could be paying way less in Thailand for groceries, but if your salary is two thousand dollars in Thailand or ten thousand dollars in Switzerland, you don't even know what the comparison is. So why would someone right. make right. the choice based on some arbitrary number of the lowest cost of living? Almost always, when the cost of living is low, the opportunity to make much more money than that is obviously significantly limited. Now, you can get yourself out of this equation by okay, you, you work online, you make ten grand, no matter where you live. Then okay, I mean, cost of living can factor in a bit more, but for the vast majority of people, I mean, sure. it just doesn't make sense to factor it in because wherever you go, you're going to be paid more or less, um, you know. An equivalent salary to cost of living. That makes sense. Yeah, and a lot of your uh, lifestyle choices aren't, you know, involved in that. I mean, let's say you have particular hobbies. Uh, yeah, you have um, just yeah, food you like. You just, let's just say food you it, like. If you like cheese, and it's you live impossible in Thailand, to calculate all that in there. Right. Well, if you like cheese and you live in Thailand, it's astronomical to buy, you know, like nice European cheese in Thailand. Whereas if you live in Croatia, the cost of living is okay, maybe one and a half times higher than Thailand, but all of the products that you're used to in the grocery store cost the same. Whereas in Thailand, right. okay, yeah, if right. you want fish sauce and different kinds of tropical fruits and whatnot, that stuff is going to be cheaper, um, which actually would be a lot cheaper for my budget because <laughs> the things I like are cheap in Thailand. But for most people, um, you know, you're going to spend way more money on groceries than the average local person. So these cost of living right. numbers can be very kind of deceiving. Yeah, it's cheap to live in Thailand as a local, but is it cheap to live in Thailand as an expat with you know some expectation of cleanliness in your house and where you live? And uh, that might be very different than what a local person expects. Right, right. Yeah, that's a good example. And so that was the first one. What was the second one? Well, the second one, I always see people deciding on where they're going to live by how easy it is to get a visa to stay there long term. I, you know, we've yes. seen this, right? Um, and that's also such a strange reason because, at least in my mind, uh, when I moved to Russia, it was actually not that easy to stay there. But I set my mind to, you know, staying there. So it didn't matter what the, you know, requirements were, or how hard it was to get a visa, or easy to get a visa. I just chose the country that I wanted to be in, and things worked out. And I believe that if you're determined to go to any country, you can find some opportunity will allow you to stay there and if you restrict yourself to these you know list of 10 or 15 countries that make it super easy to get a visa uh, most actually don't let you even work um, but you can stay uh, it just seems very kind of short-sighted in my opinion because if you're an American you want to live in Poland for example yeah it's quite difficult but you can teach English you can then you know once you get there you teach English you've got a job you can stay you can look for a new job with your you know previous experience I mean, there's just there's so many options, but people restrict themselves by the visa policies. Yeah, and I, I'm afraid that um, you know you get to a place where it's easy to get a visa, and maybe you don't even like the culture that much, or the food, or right. you know, there's so many other factors that you kind of like. Okay, it's cheap and easy to get there, and that's probably fine for a digital nomad to experience that country, right. but. That's just not at the top of my list when when you're going to spend a significant amount of time in that country. It's um, you could let's say the visa process is two weeks versus six weeks. Mm -hmm. So if you're spending six six months, even six months, like the question is four weeks. So you're you're can you wait four more weeks to have a great time in you know your you know a country that you want to be in? Right. Uh, versus a country that's just, okay, I'll, we'll give him a visa. Right. I think that's kind of a silly, uh, silly factor to, to put at the top, at least. Surely, certainly it can be a factor, but not, not at the top. Right. Right. So, I mean, I think those are the two reasons that people are focused on. I mean, I, I don't know. I see it on YouTube all the time. Like, cheapest countries to live in as a digital nomad or to, you know, live and work. Okay. <laughs> but if you don't know anything and you have no interest in the culture, you're not going to not going to thrive in that country. And you know, we want to give advice to right. help you thrive in a country. And one of the key factors is you know, your interest in wanting to be there, not just how cheap it is. I mean, 
how cheap a country is will wear off in terms of its novelty relatively quickly, I think, especially because most cheap countries have lots of, you know, bureaucratic red tape and issues to deal with. Um, and that's kind of why they're cheap, because the demand is low. Exactly. That's what I was <laughs> going to say. There's a reason why they're cheap. Right. So uh, we hope that this information was helpful to you and consider those things when you're looking for an expat destination. You know, don't put those, uh, you know, cost of living and uh, ease of getting, you know, visa or some long term stay at the top of your list because it will most likely be that you won't stay in that country right. for a long period of time unless you're really interested in the culture. So we hope that was helpful and we'll see you in another video. This was the Expat Edge with Matt and Marcus. We hope you enjoyed the video. Visit theexpatedge.com for even more content that will help you thrive abroad. You can submit your ideas for video topics and sign up for free at theexpatedge.com. See you there. Oh,